Our next question comes from Combine, who says, How do you balance weight training with combat sports? Great question. I feel like I always have to sacrifice one for the other, especially with bringing soreness into jujitsu and bringing weird achy joints into weight training. Is there some recovery magic I don't know about? Well, I don't know what level you're at as far as weightlifting or strength training or jujitsu for that matter. And, and this matters. This is important to answer this question, but I'll try to generalize here. Generally speaking... It is going to be a futile effort trying to become an elite strength athlete and an elite jiu-jitsu athlete. There simply isn't enough time to recover for both. And as you put it, if you're trying to be an elite strength athlete and an elite jiu-jitsu athlete, the jiu-jitsu will leave you with achy joints and injuries and stuff, which is not conducive to the type of strength training that you need to be doing to being a competitive power lifter or a competitive weight lifter or a competitive crossfitter or something like that. That being said, if your sport is jiu-jitsu, if that's your sport, and your weight training, your strength training, is a complement to your jiu-jitsu, this is a different thing. This is a radically different thing. This being said... If your focus is to be the best jiu-jitsu athlete that you can, then yes, you absolutely should be doing strength training. And your strength training should, once again, be complementary to the jiu-jitsu. So, if your training is leaving you too sore, if your weight training is leaving you too sore for jiu-jitsu, then you're doing something wrong. You're doing too much too soon. On the other hand, maybe you're a jiu-jitsu casual and strength training is the real thing you want to emphasize. But you're going in there with the achy joints. Now, the achy joint thing, this is something I see from two types of people. Really old guys and really young guys. The really young guys who are just starting jiu-jitsu, why? Because they do everything wrong. They fight through every position like it's life and death. They spaz out. They injure themselves more than their training partners ever will. And the old guys, well, because when you get old, <laughs> that's just life. I go into the gym sometimes with a knee sleeve on or something, and people are like, Coach, what happened to your knee? I'm like, I'm 43 years old. Nothing happened to my knee, it's just achy, so I put a knee sleeve on it. But what happened? I existed for over four decades on this planet. And, I, and there's some wear and tear on my body. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to summarize this. Train in a way, whether jujitsu is your main thing or... Weightlifting is your main thing, or neither of them is your main thing. Train in a way that is sustainable. Don't train like an idiot in jiu-jitsu and get yourself hurt so that you leave every day with achy joints and injuries. And it will probably take a long time before you figure out how to do that. You might be a purple belt or a blue belt or, you know a more advanced jiu-jitsu player before you, you really start to understand your game well enough to not get injured. Unfortunately, because like every endeavor, we do everything wrong when we start. And unfortunately, as far as combat sports goes, we often pay for that with injuries. As far as strength training goes, don't overdo it, don't overtrain. Train to the point where you are able to do it again. Now, the next thing, and this is super important, and it is probably the most ignored thing by athletes of all types, and that is recovery. Invest as much time researching recovery as you do your squatting technique and your deadlifting technique and improving your lifts and jujitsu and passing the guard and all this other stuff. We invest enormous amounts of time into improving our technique and becoming better athletes and executioners of martial arts. But what we don't often do is figure out 
why are my joints achy? Why are my muscles sore? And how can I reverse this? How can I recover faster? How can I get to the point where I'm not sore? And there are a lot of things that you can do. A ton of them. Number one, fix your sleep schedule. Everything else is auxiliary to this. Fix your sleep schedule. If you have a crappy sleep schedule, if you are sleep deprived, you are going to get more sore and more injured. And you're going to get more achy joints. So fix that. Make your sleep schedule consistent. That is the most important thing. And like I said, everything after this that I'm going to mention or anyone else is going to mention is auxiliary to a good sleeping schedule. After that, movement. Movement is medicine. You lift weights, you get sore. When do you get sore after you lift weights? Basically when you're resting, when you're sitting around. That's when the muscles start to get sore. Get up and move. I'm not saying go do another weightlifting routine. I'm saying get up and move. Go on a walk. Get the blood coursing through your muscles to bring nutrients and oxygen to those sore muscles to help repair them faster. What else gets the blood moving like that? Massage, a percussive massage gun, something like that. If you don't have the money for that, there are many other things you can do. Your arm sore? Massage it yourself. Just doing something like that, rubbing your arm? That helps, not just physically, but psychologically too. You ever, like, cut your finger? What do you do? You suck on it or hold it tight, and it just feels better for some reason? <laughs> it's a bit of a placebo, but it's also a very real thing. Applying pressure to that, what does it do? It reduces the bleeding, right? And it keeps keeps that, uh, that blood inside and helps you, essentially, heal faster and recover both physically and psychologically faster. Anyway... We're not talking about paper cuts here. We're talking about muscle soreness and fatigue after weightlifting. Now, I do a strength training session about six days a week. And I do several martial arts classes that I teach. And I do at least one sparring session or open mat session each day. Six days days a week, and then I take one day off for religious reasons, but those religious reasons are why to rest and to recover. Because, as far as I'm concerned, all spiritual things and all physical things are very, very closely related. Anyway, I'm not trying to preach to you, just explaining myself. So, it's important to take a rest day once in a while. And that's not just a religious thing, like any, any expert in physical culture, in weight training, in athletics, in martial arts, etc., will tell you, from time to time, take a rest day, because your body needs it. And that's the truth. So, what have we covered so far? Good sleep schedule? Keep the blood moving by keeping yourself moving. Take a rest day once in a while. Once a week, not a bad metric. What else can we do? Man, there are a ton of things. A ton of things. There is hot and cold therapy. What does that do? Well, that changes the way that your blood courses through your body. It's very similar to get out there and move, right? Some people take ice baths or use these cryogenic therapy chambers. They sit in there for a while and it gets nice and cold or you go from an ice bath to a hot bath to an ice bath to a hot bath. What does that do? It increases circulation, which ultimately increases recovery, decreases soreness, etc. What else can you do? Compression clothing. And this, again, has a very similar effect to just getting up there and moving. You don't need expensive compression clothing, but it is a nice little bonus if you have that. Why? That compression on the muscles offers support to the muscles and ultimately helps to circulate the blood when you get up and move a little bit, which helps you recover faster. I mean, there are all of these little things which ultimately come down to sleep well, move well, rest well, recover well, and then, oh, 
man, I can't believe I didn't say this sooner. Eat well. If you're not eating well, you're not recovering well. If you're not giving your body the building blocks that it needs to rebuild itself, you are going to fail. So eat well. Get on a strict eating schedule as well. Make sure you are getting enough of the right nutrients, enough protein, enough carbohydrates, enough healthy fats in your body. And, of course, that you're not overdoing it. Find the balance. Just like sleep, you don't want to sleep all day. Just like movement, you can't lift all day. Same thing with eating. Don't overdo it. Find the balance, my friends. And that's all. That's that's what your question is. How do I find the balance between strength training and jujitsu? Well, my friend, you could ask this about every single sport. If you look at every professional athlete out there, baseball players, soccer players, basketball players, football players, etc., they spend time in the weight room. Are they too sore to get out there and do their practices? For the game? No. <laughs> no. Why? Because they follow those few simple laws of athleticism. Rest and recovery. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.